Something I was curious about, it's maybe a little technical, is I just started learning how to shoot film for yes. the first time. Good for you. I didn't, go to, I didn't go to film school, so I grew up, you know, digital. And like yeah. I said before, that one scene that you shot of the sheep inspired me to like, I'm glad, just man. That's so go, cool. out, go out and do it. Um, and obviously, um, the most basic form, shooting a Bolex, you know, 250D, 500T. How did you kind of learn to shoot film and how did you start to evolve your knowledge within film to like maybe ectochrome or different different stocks, different types yeah. of cameras? Yeah, ectochrome's a little, it's a tricky one. I, I heard just, it's uh, insane. I heard it's, it's, it's tough. Just, it's just a really, it's not a lot of latitude. I just right. shot something on ectochrome. Uh, which looks dope. I'm stoked on it. But like, there's a couple shots in there. I was like, oh my God, this is, I, I was watching something that you, sh- uh, I'm on your, your website here. Is it, oh yeah. The Zara kids spring 23 was shot on Ectochrome. Yes. That's, that's, that a, that's is a, crazy. Yeah, dude, man. So I told you we got lucky too, man. We got good weather that day. And like, we, we didn't, we got terrible weather. It was pouring rain, but then like the couple scenes we had outside, like that beautiful shot of the girl on the bike at the end, yeah. that's just an act. It's a happy accident that that's as, as beautiful as it is, you know, like we were riding right at the bottom edge of what ectochrome could expose, you know, and I was a little nervous about it. And like it had been this in LA too, this terrible rainy day all day. And then the sun came out just at the end and we got this kind of golden thing over the hill there. And like, yeah, it it was, we didn't, you know, it's, it's again, it's that, that's the beauty of it. It's alchemy, Mm -hmm. man. It's like, you can't, you can't manufacture some of that, that amazing stuff, which is what makes it so, yeah, what makes it so, so, but when you, when you can get your hands wrapped around it, you know, just for a second or when, when you can, yeah, it's like, it's the best. I don't even know what the, it is I'm describing, but you understand that feeling. Right. Um, it's so special. I, I, um, shooting on film, shooting ectochrome. Yeah, dude, it's uh it's been a, it's been a process. I think part of what, what I've been so lucky to do is the first couple of things that I did, um, music videos and stuff, I really made an active effort to shoot on 16 at the time. Mm. I, I think I honestly kind of learned a lot shooting on film before I'd even shot, worked with an Alexa or an Amir or anything mm. that much. Were these Bolexes or were these like SR3s? What were you no, starting with? So, so it was at my film school, they had SR2s. At oh, SBA, SR2. they had they were just collecting dust in the closet. Which oh, nice. Bust them out of there, knock the dust off, <laughs> knock the cobwebs <laughs> off. And, um, and uh, SR2s, and then a friend of mine, Kenny Sewell, who's also a wonderful DP, owned a 416. He would let me borrow sometimes to shoot little like music videos for friends mm-hmm. and stuff. So I think I recognized at that point too that, and I was able to. My my professor at film school had a closet full of just rolls of 16 that he got from oh, school. Man. So I would beg him for, but he wouldn't give. They were supposed to be for school projects, so I'd be like, "Hey, I'm kind of doing this school project." And he'd be <laughs> like, "All right," and he'd give me a couple rolls of 50D or whatever. Um, so you kind of finessed it together. I made friends with the guys at Metropolis Post here in New York. God bless them, who like uh, you know would help me with deals and stuff. Uh, that's I who I got my uh, film scanned by. Jack, did you talk to Jack? Uh, I don't. I don't. To be honest, I don't even okay, think I talked okay. to anybody. I just dropped it off. You, if you get a chance to talk to Jack Rizzo, anybody yeah. listening to this, if you get a chance to talk to Jack Rizzo at Metropolis Post, it's always a treat. This guy's this man's a real a real legend and a real New Yorker. Okay, um, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, but he. Uh, but anyway. The, the, you know, I think, um, I made an effort to shoot on 16 because I, I think at the time too, I was, it, it was, it was at a period where I think the really popular aesthetic was, uh, I don't, I don't know if you remember this cause you're a couple years younger than me, but it was, it was like really wacky old anamorphics like Lomos and Kawas, um, on, on an Alexa mini with an easy rig. And like everybody, everybody, my age, everybody, my, all my peers <laughs> were doing this, like, docu style and i did some of that too but doing this mm-hmm. like docu style branded content um where they would shoot like that the whole thing like it would just be mm-hmm. like aiming like a lomo at the sun with somebody's head right. in between and like you know um was this like maybe five years ago or was this before that it's like 2016 2017 2018 probably okay, i mean so a little bit maybe like eight years nine years ago yeah give or yeah, take yeah yeah exactly fuck is it it's crazy it is yeah, yeah it's crazy i know <laughs> But so I wasn't that excited by that. And I liked, um, I liked film and it felt like it was sort of a anti, sort of like a, um, you know, the opposite of what was cool at that moment. And then I started shooting a bunch of 16 and the right as I did that, like 16 started to become that mm. aesthetic started to become really popular again. And you started seeing like, you know, all these big fashion brands post stuff where like, it'll cut to like a Bolex where you could see the, the open gate and you see the mm. perfs and stuff. Um, so like that aesthetic became popular. So I think, Anyway, I don't know. I've gotten off the question. What, what, That's the, okay. The, it's just kind of like how have you kind of learned to evolve your knowledge and style shooting film? Because it could be very simple just to shoot like 250D or 500T with a Bolex. But as you get to different cameras, even 35 mil, how have you even learned to do that? Like how yeah. have you learned? Was it just well, 35, your own 
35 and 16 are the same. It's the same mm. thing. It's, I mean, there's, there's the, the way you expose it and all that right. stuff, the way you lens it and everything. It's that, that's the same. It's, it's 65 is the same. You know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's all the same. It's about the emulsion and everything. How did I evolve it? Practice, you know? Right. Um, I, I think I started through passion uh, projects or through like legitimate work. A little bit of a little both. Bit of both, yeah. 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 <laughs> but 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 again, okay. This is what I was gonna say, was saying is that that uh, early on we didn't have any money, we couldn't light anything, you know that kind of thing. And I always thought like, oh, film brings so much life and texture to it um, that if you can't light, you're just using natural light and all that stuff. Film kind of you know gives it a look that um, that that felt like it was sort of a solution to some of the like you know. Uh, I feel that the lack of resources that we had elsewhere. Mm. So that's where we would put the resources for just for, for small music videos, that kind of thing. Um, and then, yeah, man, that's just how it happens. And, and you work with directors too, who like, you know, I, I know there are some directors who they, they have a hard time pitching film, but then there's some directors who only, sh- you know, like, like the rubber band guys, Simon and Jason, my friends, like that's in every treatment. And like, basically every, yeah. everything they do is kind of like, it's just assumed they're going to shoot on film. So like, I've been right. lucky with that too, you know, to get to work with directors who really value shooting on film and, and, and push that forward. Um, and, and learning to, well, I, le- learning to, yeah, learning to shoot all different stocks again, just practice, man, you know, realizing it's figuring out how lighting ratios work, figuring out how you know, different lenses are going to, are going to veil and backlight or how much they're going to hold down the shadows when you shoot a light into the lens or look at a mm. window or whatever, because that's stuff that on digital, you can see right away on the monitor, but on film, um, you know, you got to wait a couple of days to figure out whether or not you can actually see yeah, something your face with the window in front of them or whatever that, that kind of stuff. So all that. And then, and then, um, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, that's been the, the biggest thing. Um, I, I have a note in my phone that I started years ago where I, I take down exposures on set mm. when I have time, if there's a shot that I really like the look of, or that I'm having that question where I'm like, Oh my God, is this going to work? Or is it going to be way, way too, not enough fill or whatever it is, you know, that I'll, I'll take a, I'll, I'll write down notes on it. And then when I get the footage back, I'll compare it to, to the notes and be like, Interesting. Oh shit, I underexposed this too much. Or, you know what I mean? Um, Interesting. That's so, so keeping, yeah. Keeping some kind of log of it when you can on, obviously there's not mm. always time is, is really useful. Um, yeah, just experience. Mm. 